Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we tier list Buffalo Trace Bourbons, part one, run the video. All right then folks, let's get into today's video, shall we? And much like the aforementioned intro, we will be tier listing some Buffalo Trace whiskeys, I should say, because there's one rye in there too. So we could have done all of the Buffalo Trace slash Sazerac whiskeys in this umbrella. Yes, we did add two whiskeys in here, which are kind of more Sazerac than Buffalo Trace, but I still think they are made by Buffalo Trace, so that's why we included them here. So this is gonna be a part one or part two, just because there's just so much to get through. And I do wanna draw this out for like 20, 25 minutes. And also all the subscribers out there, all you folks, you've all been stepping up greatly and I appreciate that so much because it means so much as well. So let's dive into this tier list, shall we? So this was, uh, this tier list is gonna be made on tierlistmaker.com. Go check it out there, not a sponsor. So the numbers it goes through, so the top tier is gonna be S, then A, then B, then C, and then D. So then let's get into the first ball and let's get into good old classic benchmark eight. Yes, I could have included all the new benchmark releases, uh, like the bonded, the top floor, small batch, full proof and single barrel, but just off the bat, we'll just say they probably sit in C or D. However, we'll be doing the benchmark eight. So for me, this is just kind of like a catch-all bourbon for Buffalo Trace. They open up a batch of Stag Junior, they open up a Blanton's barrel, give it a good old sniff, and it's like, this is awful. Throw it into the uh, throw it into the benchmark category. This is just a casual. Anything that's not good enough, they proof it down. They're selling it in this guy. Might get some good whiskeys in there. However, most of the time, this is not a good whiskey. So what we put this as, we put this as in bottom category for D. Value for money is fantastic, like 10 bucks. However, whiskey, not great. So that was D. Next up on this list, and we have good old Buffalo Trace. So for Buffalo Trace, it's a very fantastic, oh, it's a very great whiskey. It's just a, an all round complete whiskey. This whiskey didn't necessarily get me into drinking bourbon. However, when I moved to the States, this was the first bourbon that I started drinking again. This is phenomenal, a great intro bourbon. And if you can find the single barrels, pick them up too, because they're great value for money. I'm gonna give this a B. I just think it's phenomenal value for money, very final for the most part, and just great taste in whiskey all around. So next up on this list, and we're gonna go with Buffalo Trace's kosher lineup. So they do three. They do the wheat recipe, uh, they do the, the, the rye recipe, and, the, and then something else I can't remember off the top of my head, maybe another rye. Uh, however, we just do the three as a whole. So for me, this kind of just tastes like Buffalo Trace. And you would think, oh, well, maybe it's gonna go in the B category. And no, it's not, because people think that it's not like Buffalo Trace, but it is. Obviously, the rye recipe is gonna taste a little bit different. But when it comes to the other one, it kind of just tastes like Buffalo Trace. So for me, I'm gonna put this in the C category. I think for the amount of time you spend looking for these ones, you're gonna pay a little bit more money as well. It's just not as good as the regular Buffalo Trace which is why I have to put all three of these in the C category. So next up, uh, we have the first and last rye on this list, and that is gonna be Sazerac rye. So why I put this on this list? This because it's made at Buffalo Trace Distillery. Yes, it mostly comes under the Saz umbrella. This is, like it says, it is made by Buffalo Trace Distillery, Frankfurt, Kentucky. The main or the OG distillery for this and it's in New Orleans, uh, but most of the, all, all the liquid is all coming out of Buffalo Trace. So for me, I think again, much like regular Buffalo Trace, this is a really good intro rye. You get a lot more, more bourbon notes for this rye than you do get some, from some other rye. It is a little bit of, you, you know, you get a little bit of rye spice and those kind of like bacon spices do really peak on this. However, because it's a little less ABV coming in at 45%, I believe, yeah, or 90 proof, then it's a little bit more tamer. And if you want to just get into rye, this is sweet enough. And if you're coming from bourbons, they'll kind of guide you in nicely. So what I put for this, I'm also gonna put this in the C category. It's not great, it's not brilliant, but it's not bad at all. It's just kind of middle of, middle to lower of the road. It's decent, I like it a lot. Okay, so that is gonna be C category for that. So then moving on, let's do 
Good old ancient, ancient age 10. We haven't got the ancient, ancient, oh, we haven't got the ancient age, so we will not be ranking that, but we have got the ancient age 10. So this is difficult to find, and much like some of these other whiskeys on this list, shocker. Uh, I've kept these up in Wyoming, where you find them on most shelves for like 25 to $30. It's okay. It's so just okay, I, you know, for me, for a while I was using this as my daily drink and I just loved it because I could just pick it up at any time. It kind of reminded me a lot of Buffalo Trace and it was cheap and you got more value for money. However, as the time has gone on, it's got, maybe it's just a plastic bottle leaching into the whiskey. So I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give, put this in the C category as well. So it's gonna join a few others in the C category. That was ancient, ancient plastic age. Next up, let's kick it up a gear here and let's bring it down to good old Blanton's, another uh, decisive bourbon on this list. Some people go looking to the ends of the world to get this bottle. You can get some phenomenal taste in Blanton's. Um, and also like the barrel straight from the barrel or the red or the green ones, which we will not be ranking today because we haven't tried them or haven't had them. So what we'll be doing is just this one. And for me, I am going to put, check my notes here. So I'm gonna put this in the B category. So quite high up. Um, but not quite low down, so kind of in that middle of the road there as well. I just think that, yes, you have some really great barrels and you have some just okay barrels, so that's why it's deserving of the B category there. So that was Blanton's. Next up, let's go with Eagle Rare 10 year. If you can find it, 30 to 40 dollars, really good value for money. For me, I really like this whiskey. I love the oak backbone that you get from it. If you like an oakier, lower proof whiskey, this one is for you. If you don't, probably not. If you like more of like a sweeter whiskey, Buffalo Trace is probably gonna be your whiskey there. But for me, I really like this and that's why I'm gonna put this in the A category. So not quite the higher echelons, or echelons of the S category, but A category is very respectable for a 30 to $40 Buffalo Trace bourbon. Eagle Ritania, can't go without it. So we have three bottles left, and yes, this next bottle is not, I'm not even sure if this is or isn't made at Buffalo Trace, but I just shoehorned it in here anyway, and that is gonna be a Canadian whiskey because that is Caribou Crossing. So I wanted this on this list because I wanted to talk about this whiskey so bad. So much like Blanton, some people do really like to find this bottle because it has that like kind of uh, Caribou uh, topper, which is a phenomenal topper. This thing weighs a ton kill someone with it. However, the juice inside is pretty bad. Kind of gives off paint stripper vibes. I'm surprised that um, Sazerac put out a product that is this bad. Yes, it is a single barrel, so it could just be a very bad single barrel. However, it is just not great whatsoever. And that's why this belongs in the D category. Probably would have put a lower down on that if I could, but this is the categories they had to work with. So there that is, Caribou Crossing going in the D category. So we have two left, and let's do, uh, let's do this one first. So this is Stag Junior. You know my feelings on Stag Juniors if you watch the channel. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal whiskey. Excellent value for money. You get a lot of proof with it as well. There's no other category for this to go in than the S category. It is an elite, elite bourbon. If you haven't had the luxury of trying this whiskey, go out to a bar, pay, pay the money to try it. Don't pay too much, but try good money to try this whiskey. Try it neat. Maybe try it in a cocktail or try it in an ice cube if that's your jam. So big burnt caramel notes, barrel char for days. You get the cinnamon, you get everything with this bowl. It is just exemplifies exactly what Buffalo Trace is all about. And that's why it is in the S category. One more whiskey remaining. And that is gonna be good old Elm P. Lee. MSRP again, much like the rest of the things we've already gone through today is on the lower end, around 40 to $60, which is not much money for it. Uh, it is a single barrel, some variations between the other single barrels, but this is the second uh, one I've had to try of Elmatili. So I feel like I have a pretty good read on them so far. A bottle that goes for a lot of money on secondary, as far as I know. But for me, I'm gonna give this and this is controversial. I'm gonna put it in the D category. Yes, I'm gonna put it in the bottom category. If I'm looking at the other whiskeys that are in the D category, 
Now, I don't think this is anything as good as Ancient Ancient Age, if I'm honest. I think Ancient Ancient Age is better than this, if I'm, which is nuts if you think about it. Like this plastic 1.75 litre somewhat finable bottle is better than the Elma Tea Leaf. That's my personal opinion. Like I said, yes, probably a little bit controversial, but it, it just doesn't live up to the hype. It just really doesn't. It's not worth hunting for. Leave it there on the shelf. Don't pay crazy money. Yes, you might want to pick it up because it's El Matili, right? Big story and a lot of fuss about it, but it's just not great juice in the bottle. So if you like what we do, tune in for the second part where we'll be doing a bunch of wellers. We will be doing some E.H. Taylor, maybe some more other stuff. Let's see what I can find just to shoehorn into the second part here. As we drink through the world's whiskeys, one glass at a time. Cheers.